Shock your blood. Lots of saliva as well. Hey everyone, welcome back to Amuse Bouche and happy Halloween. To celebrate the occasion, I thought, why not do some ink? A bit Halloween y. <laughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to use something that gets used a lot around this time of year, but usually it's chucked in the bin pumpkin. We're going to make a lovely spicy pumpkin soup using that pumpkin that you would have used for your little lantern, your little pumpkin lantern, but also as a nice little added extra, a nice little added treat, we're gonna make some little mummy's fingers. Well, not my mummy, not my mummy, not her fingers, because that would be mental. The fingers of a mummy, like the film that Brendan Fraser was in, The Mummy. Basically, they're chipolatas wrapped in pastry. There, said it. Okay, I was gonna let you have a surprise, but I've confused myself in the whole thing with the mummy's fingers so that's what that's what they are it's a nice simple recipe but you know it's halloween so we're all out there having fun except we're not trick-or-treating no trick-or-treating please no 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 thank you let's get to it i mean i've got a pumpkin and I thought it would be rude not to make a little jack-o'-lantern. But to be honest, it's a bit of a long task, so I thought, what a nice time to just sort of lay some facts about pumpkins on you. First of all, pumpkin, fruit, not a vegetable. Something to do with the fact that it's got seeds in the middle, but that must mean that a butternut squash is also a fruit, which, you know, I'm, I'm just not having, so I don't know what to think. The first jack-o'-lanterns wouldn't have been made with pumpkins. They'd have been made using turnips or potatoes pagan tradition started in Scotland and Ireland meant to ward off bad spirits. Nowadays we're putting the dark spirits into the lanterns. The largest ever pumpkin was grown in 2006 by Ron Wallace in Rhode Island, USA. Weighed about 1,500 pounds. Ron said that he'd missed taking care of his baby every day. Yeah, he sounds like a right barrel of laughs, doesn't he? I mean, bringing out his family photos. Here's me and the wife and our pumpkin. Uh, but, you know, there, you, there you go. There you have it. Freshly lit up ready to go on your doorstep, although not today. Today, we're gonna to tear the pumpkin head in half and prep it for our soup. Now, this is a big pumpkin, so we're only gonna use about half of it. I'd say you're looking at about 500 grams of pumpkin. With that half, we're gonna cut it into quarters and get it on a baking tray. Drizzle with a little oil and use your hands to fully coat the whole thing. Then we're gonna season them up with some black pepper and some sea salt before getting them into the oven at about 180 for 40 minutes or until they're completely soft. Next up, we'll head over to the oldie stove and get our witch's cauldron out. It's, uh, it's just a saucepan that I've used in every other video. Into said saucepan goes one large white onion, which I've just chopped up roughly. Let it cook down with some olive oil until it goes soft and slightly golden. Then into our cooked onion, we're gonna go with four cloves of minced up garlic, one whole chili, which I've de-seeded and finely chopped, and a decent sized thumb of ginger, which I've, again, just chopped up. Get it all into your saucepan and let it have a couple of minutes just to get aromatic. When your pumpkin's cooked and cooled slightly, you can remove all the tough outer skin. Either use a spoon or your hands and just peel the skin away from the pumpkin flesh. Once it's all removed, you can mash up the flesh a little bit and then put it into the pan, juices and all. Give it a few moments, let all the juice from the pumpkin concentrate and then add a few sprigs of thyme just to give a bit of fragrance to the soup. Finally, we're gonna add one liter of vegetable stock to the saucepan and let it come to a simmer. Once simmering, stick the lid on and let it cook for 15 minutes. You've already cooked the pumpkin, so all we're trying to do here is just steep the liquid in all of that lovely pumpkin juice. While we're waiting for that to cook, let's look at our other little Halloween treat, some mummy's fingers. These are very simple, but very effective if you're looking for something for a Halloween party. Take a sheet of ready-made puff pastry, and using a sharp knife or a pizza cutter like this, we're gonna cut the pastry down into thin little strips. Then take some good quality chipolatas and wrap the pastry around the sausage. Simple as that. You don't need to be neat. I've heard that when the Egyptians were mummifying the dead, by the time they got to the fingers, they'd pretty much given up. So, you know, they can be a bit messy. Get them onto a baking tray and into the oven for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, bring them out, give them a brush in with some egg and season with salt and pepper. Back into the oven for another five minutes and there you have it, some mummy's fingers. Back to our soup and after it's been simmering away for a little bit, we're gonna finish it up. First, take out the time sticks, you know, 
Trick or treat goes too far when you're having to pull shards of thyme twig out of your gums. And then we're going to take the hand blender and blitz the soup up until it's smooth. To finish things off, we're going in with about a tablespoon of hot sauce, which we'll just mix through the soup. Although when I did this, I did think it looked quite good as sort of splats of blood. So that's what we're going to do as a little bit of decoration here. And there you go, a couple of spooky treats to have this Halloween. Halloween dish from a moose bouche. Mummy's fingers. <laughs> and we've got our spicy pumpkin soup. <laughs> if you're making the little jack o' lantern things, the little pumpkins with the candles in, you're going to need to use that pumpkin. Don't just throw it in the bin. Bad, bad. Cut it out, put your candle in it, and then take the best bits of flesh of the pumpkin, make this pumpkin soup. Um, we're going to give it a try. We're also going to give it a try of our little mummy's fingers. Ooh. I think I got a, <coughs> a big old, <coughs> big old slush of hot sauce in that spoon. It's it's quite light, spicy from the chili from that hot sauce. Definitely spicy. After you got back from your trick or treating, what a lovely warm dish to have. No wrong. No trick or treating this year, guys. Okay. The real trick or treater is coronavirus. Let's give these little mummy's fingers a try and get plenty of blood on it. It's a very straightforward thing. It's a chipolata. It's got some pastry around it. We've salt and peppered it. We've given it a little bit of egg wash. But your kids are going to love them. Your kids? Have you got kids? I haven't got any kids. I'm a big kid, in a way. Next week, we're going to be tackling something for fireworks night, even though there's not going to be a fireworks night either. So, but until then, Subscribe to the YouTube channel, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this Halloween special, and I'll see you next time.